Today is Saturday, March 7, 2020. I am Julie Hankinson, and this is The View Out My Window. Well, in an effort to de-stress today, I have been working on recipes that are from the 18th century. So I've been watching the uh, Townsend videos. He does the um, cooking using um, really old um, cookbooks and techniques, you know, like cooking over the open fire. And the one that I prepared today was actually called buttered eggs because scrambled eggs were not called scrambled eggs back then. They were called buttered eggs. And it used an entire quarter pound of butter as well as cream and nutmeg. And you're not using a lot of nutmeg, just a little tiny bit and just a dollop of, um, you know, real cream. Uh, but you're using eight eggs and you're serving it over toast because, um, you know, they, most of them lacked eating utensils back then. So I made that up and I made up the full recipe. He only makes up half a recipe. Uh, he only does four eggs, but I did eight eggs. And not that I ate the full eight eggs, but I did um, probably eat a good two or three of them because I gotta tell you, this was good. And truthfully, I never thought of putting nutmeg in scrambled eggs. I know it's only just a touch, but um, you know, just that little tiny bit of added flavor it really came through in a, in a very pleasant way, not an overwhelming way. So I just wanted to let you know what I was doing to have some fun today and to try and relax. And yes, I've been doing knitting, so I've been feeling very um, 18th century, you know, <laughs> with my buttered eggs and my knitting and my um, just thinking about do I have enough stuff put away to last, you know, as far as food and, and the pantry? Uh, so really sort of getting into an alternative reality here of, um, thank goodness it's going to be spring because it was just really feeling like um, winter. And so I had that whole, um, winter, you know, buckle down for the winter, make sure you have enough stores in the pantry, all that kind of thing going on. And it's, um, add to that, today was a very gloomy, uh, rainy, chilly day. And it was like really the kind you just want to um, wrap yourself in a warm blankie and, and huddle indoors type of day. So, um, I hope that, you know, you're having some fun this weekend, uh, because we can't always, uh, get out and do things, but that doesn't mean that we can't create our own entertainment or have a bit of fun or, or try something new, even if it's, um, you know, uh, just something that we've seen on, you know, a video somewhere. So, um, and I've been uh, looking at the new Trimmers series because um, I really like, well, the first couple of Trimmers movies, a couple of three, and then it seemed to go downhill. But, um, you know, it's like, uh, that didn't last long. I'd much rather read about and watch um, Mr. Townsend uh, talk about uh, buttered eggs and potted beef and all this kind of stuff. So uh, that was my fun and games today. Um, and as you can see, like I said, the view out my window, it is definitely 
uh, gray and overcast and whereas yesterday was so pretty and calm but at least we've got freighters moving on the um, on the water um, there is some transport going on and uh, I don't know if this means that things are picking up or not but it's always good to have um, movement it seems that for a while things had just slowed down to a standstill again this is my view out my window and you know it's a very small little microcosm of the world but we all um, you know can make deductions from what we see whether we're looking at trucks on the highway hauling containers or the lack of trucks on the highway um, with containers uh, we're talking about we go to the doctor's office and or we try to fill a prescription through express scripts or Walmart or CVS or something and they don't have it and they have to order it um, all of these are little indicators little clues that we can put together and create our own analysis of the impacts and what's happening in the world um, you know they don't seem like much on the surface but when you put all the little tiny pieces together they are creating a um, picture if you will and um, I hope that you are preparing um, remember to be considerate whenever you are shopping and don't totally wipe out the entire shelf well unless it's the last item then I suppose you'd be wiping out the shelf but um, you know let's be considerate I know we're trying to make sure that we have enough to go for 30 days but let's keep everything in perspective and remember that we are also part of the picture that is being created now as um, I know that we are all being impacted sometimes I look at the um, the Seahawks as they're gliding through the air and I'm just saying oh they look like they're having so much fun without a care and um, I'm not sure if we should have some sort of balance between that carefreeness that they exhibit as, you know, part of nature's creatures and our overabundance of caution and, and um, our, the panic. You know, we have that panic center, center the amygdala in our brains that it's the fear and I think that that's what um, is we're all feeling right now is a fear because of the unknown I know that all of us know that the common flu does kill more people even than the coronavirus has currently killed um, however, we do have the option of getting a vaccination for the flu and we currently do not have a vaccine for the coronavirus um, and we do have drugs that we can use against the common flu, whereas we really don't have any proven treatments for the coronavirus, the COVID-19, excuse me. That's what the WHO wants us to call it. And I think that that's part of the fear factor is that we don't have a vaccine. We don't have a proven treatment. We can't just go out and buy Thermoflu or whatever, or buy, you know, at the pharmacy um, and we also are being given multiple numbers
based on information that we don't know is entirely accurate. So we don't know if the death rate really is three to four percent because we cannot really know um, how accurate the information is that we have received out of China. And what we do know is we see the astronomical escalation and contagion going on um, in places like South Korea and Italy and Iran, and we see the very large death rates there. And it does send our brain into a, you know, flight or fight uh, response. And in this case, we are <laughs> fleeing to the grocery stores and stocking up and um, sealing ourselves into our homes. Um, I actually heard this morning that quite a few people have been stocking up on uh, ammunition. I mean, to the point that sales have gone up over 100% in more than 10 states. So a lot of people are also um, preparing for the fight portion um, of fear. So be very careful who and how you confront people because you don't know if they have um, an over um, abundance of adrenaline flowing through their system right now because they are afraid. And it is entirely, entirely uh, understandable because we are being confronted on a daily basis, almost on an hourly basis, by new um, fear factors that are uh, these messages that are coming to us from the media and uh, our iPhones and the new newspapers and magazines and the financial sectors. And even if something doesn't impact us directly, it affects someone that we know or somebody that we know knows, you know, there's always that six degrees of, of um, being impacted by information. And we are all being fed information that is directly causing this fear center in our brain to react. So do please do the simple basics like washing your hands and don't, you know, go to large crowds or gatherings. And, but also, you know, I know everyone keeps saying, well, don't panic, stay calm, as they run for the doors. But you've got to create your own center of calm and try and balance what is going on while you're preparing to care for your own family and for yourself. And know that there are mixed messages and that you need to find reliable um, messaging. So be careful whom you select, who you select as your authority and just stay safe and take care of yourself and try to do the little things to balance out the fear that your brain is focuses, focusing on right now because it is being overwhelmed and it could use a little bit of happiness to, um, you know, get it off that panic train. So y'all take care and I wish you a good night and happiness.